Well, welcome to the Moral and Ethical Leadership Podcast hosted by the BYU Management Society Salt Lake Chapter. I'm Dave Austin. And I'm Kurt Frankham. We sure hope you're all safe and healthy during this incredibly difficult time. We've been doing this podcast for about a year with our monthly luncheon speakers. Due to the crisis that we're currently in, we're changing it up a little bit. We're starting a new guest series called Voices of Light. And we know there are a lot of people suffering out there right now, whether it is uh, physically, emotionally, or economically. And our hope is to bring you guests who can uplift, inspire, and have honest conversations with us. We'd like to have guest interviews on a somewhat regular basis, maybe even weekly, and hopefully this can help us get through this together. And we're so blessed and excited to have with us today the Bucket List family. <laughs> Jessica, Hello? Hello. For people who don't know you and your story, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. And uh, I can't imagine anybody wouldn't know you, but can you get sure. a, kind of, a little bit of, a, uh, of your story? Um, I mean, my story, I guess, well, my husband and I, we met, um, we met on our missions and then we, uh, both went to BYU and started dating there. Garrett played soccer at BYU. Um, I graduated in advertising, uh, Garrett, while he was at BYU worked on an app called scan and that eventually sold to Snapchat. And once he had sold that, he, um, he actually wanted to finish, we moved out to LA to work at Snapchat. And then after that, he, um, he wanted to finish his senior year of soccer at BYU. So we moved back to BYU. And although I love BYU, I felt like I was going backwards. I was like, oh, we just moved on. <laughs> and uh, we had kind of compromised with after his senior year of soccer, we could go do a little bit of traveling. So we um, sold everything, made about $45,000, put all the money in savings from, from the acquisition and started to do a little bit of traveling, which was supposed to be four months. And that four months evolved into, well, now five years. And we traveled full time for three years, uh, just about a year and a half ago, bought a house here in Hawaii. But I mean, we travel with our three kids. I think that's what we're best known for. Uh, the older two, I think, have been to like 78 countries. The little two-year-old has maybe been to like 35. So we've done a lot of traveling and then we document it all on social media and try to share a little bit of goodness and family and kindness and service um, on social media. That's awesome. And so as you, uh, as you travel around to different countries with the, with these kids of yours, uh, what, uh, how do you, how do you keep things together or what, do you have a certain vision or focus with each country you, you go to? I mean, so every place we go to, we usually try to have a purpose. Our, our values with our travels are adventure, culture, and service. So everywhere we go, we try to, you know, align with those. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of become a way of life. It very much evolved. It wasn't necessarily something we set off to do, although we set up for a few months of travels, we didn't intend for it to turn into a full-time job, which it has. And uh, it's just kind of our way of life, you know, and the kids are used to it and are stellar travelers. I mean, there's definitely hard days and it, there's a learning curve, you know, our babies too. And he's in that learning curve trying to figure out how to make these long flights work, but um, they've just, they've gotten so good at it. And now it's like a family business. Speaking of traveling, uh, my daughter is a huge fan of yours on Instagram, and she uh, she pointed out to me, I guess a little while ago, you got stung by a Portuguese man of war, um, and my oldest, uh, the one that's getting ready for a mission, had the same thing happen to him down in the Keys. And uh, Oh, no. <laughs> Where did he get stung? He was stung on his arm. We just got back from a Disney cruise, and my sister was out, um, and she said, hey, look, it's a it's a Princess Tiara, and went out, and he grabbed it. And uh, anyway, we were we were scared when we looked it up and saw it was the third most dangerous jellyfish in the world. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> it's gnarly. Face, right? <laughs> yeah, I had it on my face. We were in Tonga. We were swimming literally with humpback whales, oh. and I was trying to kind of keep up, and then all of a sudden, I just felt it across, something across my face, and it was stinging. You know, a lot of times when you're, like, snorkeling, you feel some, like, LinkedIn that are stinging. And so I thought it was that. And I kind of was looking at everybody like, is anybody else getting stung? And then I was like, whoa, that like, it like this like surge of pain kind of went through. So I started like swatting at my face. And then I pulled off a really long, like purpley pinkish tentacle. Hmm. And I knew, I knew what a man of war was. I didn't see the full organism, but I saw the tentacle. And then my friend came over and was like, yeah, you still have like little like specks on your face. So I, I couldn't believe it. I was in so much pain. Thank you. I was in so much pain and uh, I was like, I need to be life flighted out of here. Like I thought it was awful. And our guide was this Australian guy who I guess swims through Portuguese man of war all the time. And he was kind of like, it's fine. It's fine. But then 30 minutes later, it like subsides and it just goes away. Yeah. 
I don't know if your son had the same thing, but same thing. Yeah, yeah, it was excruciating pain. Yeah. Well, and I won't tell you what happened right after it, uh, but it did involve some urine going on the hand. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> um, what I wanted to ask you, you've been able to help your children learn through so many things about the world through your travels. Many parents are feeling like they're prim primarily responsible for educating and learning in their families and homes. What advice would you give to them to engage their children in a learning atmosphere and also to maybe help keep learning fun? Um, you know, I guess we've just had kids with us for so long. We've kind of just been homeschooling, I suppose. They're still really young. You know, we have a year old and a, um, and a five, seven and two, and they've just gotten used to kind of learning on the road, you know, like I love that my kids have learned what an elephant says while they've ridden an elephant, you know, or while they've like been around them, but, um, just trying to always make things exciting. And even if it's not exciting, we try to make it exciting. And I think that's something that any parent can do is like, doesn't matter what like topic you're learning about. If you make stuff like magical, you know, we go to Norway and we're like, Oh, there's trolls in Norway and just try to make it this magical experience and like get them really into like wherever we are. Um, I feel like almost every country we've been to has some sort of like Disney story behind it. So we go to the middle East and we're like, this is where Aladdin and Jasmine live and, you know, really make it exciting. Yeah. And so uh, do you classify Hawaii as sort of your home base or, uh, yeah. So we bought a house about two years ago. Uh, and then we've been here, you know, I would say we travel every month. Maybe Garrett and I travel every month and the kids every other month. Nice. So when you're at home in, in Hawaii, there is there, um, you know, when maybe you're not traveling and, and, uh, there's more routine to life, is there any different approach you take with, uh, with, you know, educating your kids and keeping things adventurous, even though you're not, you know, traveling to a new location? Um, no, it's just kind of all the same stuff. Like, sorry, I've got kids jumping in here. <laughs> um, no, I feel like it's all kind of the same, you know, like we try to give them as much consistency when we're home because on the road, it's not really consistent. Um, but you know, trying to get out and, and be active, which that's kind of why we chose Hawaii. Cause it's so easy to be active here. You know, they finish school and then it's beach time or soccer practice or, you know, whatever we're playing for the day. So Jessica, we're obviously living in a difficult time right now with the with this pandemic. Um, how can, how do you think social media can help connect people when social distancing keeps them apart? I mean, it, I, I feel like it's even more magnified right now, where social media can be just the biggest like blessing, and it can also be like so negative. Uh, and you really have to go into it with whichever mentality you choose. You know, my dad always grew up telling me, and I hated it. I, I would be in a cranky mood and he would come in and be like, oh, you choose your attitude, Jessica. <laughs> and, and I, and that's so true. Like you can go on social media and choose to be negative and cho or choose to be positive. And if you go on wanting to um, have a good experience and come out with like positive thoughts, then you have to really consciously go in and, and do that. And, and we've always, I feel like Garrett has, my husband has shifted my mentality from being a consumer to a creator. And I also think that's important right now, especially as members of the church, to be putting out good and putting out love and kindness and family rather than just consuming, because sometimes the consuming can get you down, you know? So if you're putting out the good, then, um, then I feel like you're doing your part. So, and do you have any specific guidelines as a family as you create content for social media that uh, helps you put out better content or, cause sometimes you can get in this trap where you try and create idealism of, you know, make yeah, sure the well, I think perfect. a lot of it is like, it's first and foremost, like for us, it's always been our journal, our family journal. Like, what do you want to remember? I don't care to remember mm -hmm. what I had for breakfast and I don't care to remember like stupid things that I, that we've done. <laughs> You know, it's a lot of like the really funny moments or the unique things that like our little babies learning and saying. So like, it's just stuff that you want to remember at the end of the day. And then also like, you know, now that my kids are on social media more than they usually are, not social media, but are on like laptops and, you know, on technology, like what would be good for them to consume, you know? Um, am I proud to say, you know, when someone reaches out and it's like, Hey, I love your video. And my kid was inspired to learn how to swim because he saw your kid swimming. I like feel good about it rather than like, you know, my kids opening up toys and toys and toys. And then other kids being like, I want toys and toys and toys, you know? <laughs> That's 
Awesome. And you have a book coming out. Is that correct? Oh, Garrett just had a little quarantine project. He had written actually, I think during Sunday school, he had written a little poem (laughs) and it's kind of been sitting in his like back pocket for the last little while. And we had some time and a friend that's an illustrator and he put out like a little children's book just on, on Amazon, the KDP like publishing thing. And yeah, it was cute and a learning experience for us. Well, that's great. Um, I did want to ask you too about getting out of Australia. You had a hard time getting out uh, during coronavirus. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, we went to Australia. We had we had big plans for spring break. You know, we're trying to keep our travels to the kids like a uh, school break. So we had big plans to go to Abu Dhabi, uh, Korea, and then back to our mission to Russia. We were going back to Russia for the first time. We were so excited. And then everything just exploded in Korea. And so we're like, okay, well, we're not going to do Korea. Let's go to Australia. Australia be safe. So we got to Australia and like literally we landed and like the United States went berserk. And it was it was crazy like looking at home like the stuff I like on the news back home and seeing how like chaotic it was. Meanwhile, in like Western Australia, it's it's nothing. Like nobody really has it and every grocery stores are stocked and it was just kind of those things where we're like, do we stay or do we go? Like you want to be home, but at the same time, like the U.S. is literally in sheer in utter chaos. Um, and then getting home, we had to reroute because by the time it was time to go home, flights were closing, uh, countries were closing. We were supposed to go through New Zealand. New Zealand wouldn't even allow transit passengers, so we had to reroute through through Sydney. And I mean, I feel like we were one of the last flights out of there, so I think we kind of made it out just in time to get back. So. I'm glad we're home, but I will say like, I did feel really safe in Western Australia. Yeah, that's great. So what about from a spiritual uh, perspective with traveling around and, and uh, I mean, obviously there's many educational opportunities and as you visit new locations, uh, spiritually, how do you uh, nurture your kids that way as you, as you travel? Um, you know, it's been interesting. It's been tough because, um, because we have traveled so much, you don't have, you know, a lot of times we go to church and it's not even in English. And so, I've learned that what the gospel is, is whatever I teach my children, you know, and I, I'm not relying on Sunday school teachers and I'm not relying on friends or anybody to teach my children the gospel. It's all on me, which is tough, but at the same time, like it, it is what you make of it. And we've tried really hard to just be good examples and disciples of Christ wherever we go. Uh, we love going to church all around the world it's, there's nothing that brings me like more joy. And I feel the spirit stronger than when I walk into a sacrament meeting in a different language. And I just hear from familiar, like him, like that's, it's just so special to me. And, you know, the gospel is the same everywhere. And, and it's really awesome. We went to church once I remember in, um, Belgium, no hungry. We were in Budapest, Hungary. And you walked in, it was a beautiful chapel and everybody kind of looked like they were from like Draper, Utah, like everyone was really beautiful. And like, and I was like, oh, this is probably just like a bunch of like expats who like kind of have this American church here, but nobody spoke English and everyone was so welcoming and just were going about their business as this like Hungarian like church. And I just loved it. I was so happy to see this like really solid, the gospel is so like thriving in a different country that wasn't American and it wasn't Utah and it wasn't anything else. Like there's been some really great experiences like that when we've been able to attend church. And it is amazing. Like you said, to be able to go and you, and you, and you learn the same thing, no matter where you're at, you're on the same Sunday school lesson, no matter where oh, you're totally. at. Uh, whether you're totally. Utah, we love it. All over totally. My, my aunt and uncle are actually mission presidents right now in Russia. And uh, have told oh, us no way. You know, some of the things. That what they, mission are they in? Do you know? They're, they're the uh, Novus Reverse mission. I think it's the Novus Reverse mission. What's his name? His name is Steve Lamb, Stephen Martin. Yeah, okay. I talked to him because I wanted to see how we could help the missionaries when we were out there, when we were out there. I mean, we were supposed to go for spring break, but anything, anyway, everything was canceled. But our, my mission, Vladivostok, Russia, joined with the Nova Sibiris mission. So that's who I was yeah. like trying to get in touch with. So, small role. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they had a bunch of their volunteers because they can't call them missionaries, they're volunteers and go home. And uh, so uh, have told us some of their challenges, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still awesome to hear about. So. That's super cool. Super cool. Well, we sure appreciate your time. We'll let you go. Thank you so much for all you do for good in the world. And uh, we, we, we appreciate you coming on with us. And thank you to all of our listeners. We'll be back again next week with the Voices of Light podcast uh, sponsored by the BYU Management Society, Salt Lake Chapter. Society, Salt Lake Chapter. Society, Salt Lake Chapter.